We want to particularly welcome our visitors here, but welcome to everybody for our 164th birthday party uh, for Middle Creek Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love! What depths of peace when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory sin's curse is lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine but with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. So I'm feeling a little bit under this weather. And so I'm going to do much of the service seated right here. And so I'm not going to require you to stand if I'm not standing. Besides, the first prayer is extraordinarily long. And so we will begin our service seated as we have our call to worship together. God gathers us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. Welcome one and all. Welcome one and all. 
welcome, one and all. We're going to sing together here in this place or gather us in, whichever version you know, the words are the same. Christ does gather us in. He gathers us together to be his people. He gathers us in to offer thanks and praise. Let us pray together. <clears throat> we come in celebration of the years that we have been together as the people of God in praise and worship and service. Let us thank God for the blessings received and for our four parents whose vision led them to start a congregation in this place. For those who through the years by their work and witness have shown themselves to be the people of God, for the ministries that have flourished here in the name of Jesus Christ, for the children and young people whose lives have been shaped in part by the work of this church, for the clergy that have served here over the years faithfully preaching and teaching the word of God. For the visitors that have passed through these doors and the welcome they have received, for the warmth of community and the loving support it affords, for the spiritual strength of our members, the tangible presence of Christ in their lives, and for God's true gift of grace. God of the ages, past, present, and future, you have called us to be your people. You have been faithful to bless us and make us a beacon on the hill. We come before you as a people with short-term memory, forgetting your promises. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. in a position to condemn us only Christ and Christ lived for us Christ died for us Christ was raised for us Christ reigns in victory for us and Christ prays for us know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven and be at peace now offer the peace of Christ to one another God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing together sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and Our scripture lesson comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Let us give our glory and praise by singing responsively, Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. 
Today we are beginning a series of lessons on the Beatitudes. And we are, each Beatitude, as you know, begins with the word blessed. And some translations translate that word blessed, the Greek word for blessed, as happy. Now, that translation is accurate. That is what the word in Greek means, makarios. But it kind of sounds a little bit like the Macarena, doesn't it? But it's not. But it's always kind of confused me because the, the Beatitudes don't seem like things that we would be happy about. Now, Pat and I had the opportunity to visit what's called the traditional Mount of Beatitudes in Galilee. And this is actually a view of that mount from the Sea of Galilee. Those funny white patches are cover plastic coverings over banana plants, just so you know. Um, it, it does look like that much of the time, because apparently they grow better that way. And, but uh, we had the chance to go to the top of that mountain. And so we have a picture now from the top of the Mount of Beatitudes. And we were able, uh, most of the people would stay at the Church of the Beatitudes, where all the crowds and people were. But our tour guide knew a special secret. And so he took us around the side of the church and underneath a broken, a broken spot in a fence. And we crawled through there and we walked down a path until we finally came to the hill, to the mount. And so we sat on the stones at the top of the Mount of Beatitudes, the top of where the Sermon on the Mount was. And we listened to our Israeli guide read the scriptures, the Beatitudes to us in Hebrew. Now, of course, Jesus probably would have spoken Aramaic, but Aramaic is just a form of Hebrew. And it was really, really special to hear him read those words in the Hebrew language, to know that the people who were sitting on that mountain listening to Jesus on that day heard something very similar. And so as we were listening to these words, we were able to hear him say them the way that Jesus might have said them. And he told us something very interesting. He said that the Hebrew word for blessed means privileged. Now, I've been thinking about that for all of these months. This idea of being privileged to have these things, to experience these things mentioned in the Beatitudes. And frankly, I'm just as confused by the word privileged as I was by the word happy. Because again, most of these things, most of these experiences don't actually seem like privileges to us, do they? But throughout this summer, we're going to consider what it means to experience those things that Jesus called privileges and why they just might be a privilege for us to experience it. Now, the first beatitude that I read says that blessed are the poor in spirit. The Amplified Bible describes poor in spirit as those devoid of spiritual arrogance or those who regard themselves as insignificant. That didn't really help, did it? How does that make us privileged to regard ourselves as insignificant? How does it make us privileged to de be devoid of spiritual arrogance? So I thought, OK, I'm going to look and see where Jesus said this elsewhere in the New Testament. And that should really help we'll be able to find out exactly what Jesus meant. So I have this handy dandy little computerized guide of all the scriptures and I type in poor in spirit and Matthew 5, 3 comes up. And only Matthew 5, 3. This is the only place in all of the scriptures, both Old and New Testament, where the words poor in spirit are used. Hmm. How do we consider this if we don't really have an understanding of it? So I thought, well, let me look at other places where the words in spirit are. Maybe the Old Testament will have something there that will help me. 
And so I looked up, I put in just in spirit, or I think I may have even just put in spirit with a little lowercase s, and three scriptures popped up. So we're really, we're really making progress here. Beyond, beyond, the, uh, beyond Matthew 5. Psalm 51.17 says, The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. Hmm. Okay. Not too happy about that one. Isaiah 57.15 says, and this is God speaking, I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit. Okay. Isaiah 66, 2, God speaking again. But this is the one to whom I will look, to the humble and contrite in spirit, who trembles at my word. Well, we can infer from these Old Testament scriptures that poor in spirit means someone who is broken, humble, or contrite in spirit. Frankly, that makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Not so much happy and certainly not so much privileged. How about you? How are you feeling about those words? You know, in our society, being broken and humble and contrite are not necessarily things that we look for. When we're looking for our leaders, as we're looking at our presidential candidates, for example, we don't necessarily want somebody who's broken to be our president. We don't necessarily want, well, we might want somebody who's humble, but contrite. You know, we're told from the time we are little to feel confident about ourselves and what we do and to be assured in what we're doing. When I listen to my grandchildren, they reflect that idea. You know, I'm really smart. I can do all these things. That's what we're told. We're told to be proud of our accomplishments. And then we're told that we should justify all our actions. Maybe we're not told this, but we're shown this in the attitudes of others, that when we make a decision, rather than admitting that maybe it's a mistake or, or apologizing for making a mistake, Rather, we're supposed to justify why we chose that way, and that way must be right because we chose it. Because apologizing or admitting mistakes is a sign of weakness. When I was in seminary, I was told by a professor, never admit that you're wrong to your congregation because it's a sign of weakness. Well, those of you who have known me for the last 15 years know that I've totally disregarded that advice. When I do something that is a mistake, I apologize for it. Sometimes publicly, but oftentimes in, in private with the person that I've wronged. Jesus calls being humble and broken and contrite, being poor in spirit, a privilege that it's a privilege for us to be that way. Well, why? Why might he do that? Well, the reality is that a person who is poor in spirit is one who knows that they are not God. I have a friend who often says, I know there is a God and I am not him. When we know that we are not God, we can be dependent upon the one who is God. We know that on our own, we are defenseless. We know that on our own, we are needy. We know that on our own, we are weak. And so we can put our trust in a loving God who we know will take care of us. We don't have to rely on ourselves. We don't have to rely on ourselves for forgiveness of our sins. We don't have to rely on ourselves for success. We don't have to rely on anybody but the Lord to provide for us. Every Sunday when we dedicate our gifts to God, we sing we are an offering. And what do we sing? All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you because it comes from Christ. 
It comes from God. Every gift that we have, every talent that we display, every possession that we have comes from God. Every success that we have needs to bring glory to God, and we need to bring glory to God. That's hard for us in Western society to understand. Because in Western society, we are self-made people. We have become self-sufficient. And sometimes we believe the lie that we are responsible for all of our own successes. If you go to a country like Mexico or a country like Kenya or any other place in the two-thirds world, you will find people who understand that everything comes from God. It is so humbling to me when I speak to folks from there, when I have spoken to them, because they acknowledge that on their own, they are not successful by the world's standards. And so any success that they have comes from God, that all of their possessions come from God. I've told you the story of when I was tutoring in Kenya, which a tutor is the English understanding of tutor, which means that I was supposed to actually teach somebody something. Very humbling, because they chose for me to teach them math. And those of you who know me well know that I should never, ever, ever teach anybody math. So I knew that I had done halfway decent in geometry, so we taught, I taught geometry. Thank heavens I had the book. And for them, teaching really is just writing the book out, and they copy it on the composition page. And because of the, it was a teacher's college, and so the first-year students would learn the same thing the second year. So I just kept saying to them, if your teacher, if your tutor next year tells you something different, believe them, because they for sure are right. Well, they did find out that, in fact, what I could teach and work on was music. And so I, I was asked to lead their choir because their choir was, um, was going to be preparing for the regional and national competitions, the singing competitions. And so I went into the room where we were going to have our practice, and it was completely empty. And as the students started to come in, they started to bring benches in, and they brought a chair for me. But there was no keyboard. And they're like, OK, we're ready to start. And I was like, OK, well, I could use a keyboard. So the next, so I, I taught them what I could. I do sightseeing, but I taught them what I could. And I said, do you know where we might be able to find a keyboard? And they said, oh, yes, we'll bring it tomorrow. So the next day, we get together for our, for our, um, our class, our, our choir time, and they brought me one of those 10-note little Casio-type things that I don't even know whether you can buy them anymore. And they said, here's your keyboard. They were so proud we had a keyboard. And I thought, oh, no. Well, we may do with it playing up in the soprano range and me trying to teach the basses their parts and all of that. And I said, do you happen to have a larger keyboard? And they said, well, we do, and, and we'll see what we can do to get one. And so they brought it in, and it was, it was the right size, but half the notes didn't play. Be it had been weather-worn and overused. Well, the people who had sent me to Kenya gave me plenty of money for my trip. And so I had a lot of money left over. And my host and I went down to Nairobi, and I went shopping. And thinking, just like an American, I have money. They need a keyboard. I'll buy a keyboard for them. So I went to the music store, and I got a keyboard, and I brought it back. And I was told, you need to give this keyboard to the principal of the school first. And as I brought it in, he said, our prayers have been answered. We have been praying for three years for a keyboard, and God sent you to us so that we would have one. Wow. That's understanding that it wasn't me in my Western wealth. It wasn't the people who gave me the money. It was God working everything out. And God received the glory for that. So Jesus tells us that we are blessed, we are privileged, 
Because when we experience that idea of being poor in spirit and acknowledging that everything comes from God, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is ours. That's the second part of the beatitude. It's not simply a promise for the future, but a promise for every day of our life. We experience the kingdom, heaven, a kingdom of heaven in our day-to-day -day living. We start to see that the way things are working out are the way God planned them to be, even if our situation might be uncomfortable, even if we might be in a time of need. Because in those moments, we experience the presence of God in our lives. When we can put our lives in that perspective, we have more and more God sightings because we see God active in the process. We see God working his will out in people's lives. And we don't spend so much of our time comparing ourselves with other people because all of us are gifted by God. All of us have experienced that kingdom. We can then rejoice in their successes as well as our own and rejoice together. We can live out 1 Corinthians 13 with one another because we haven't put ourselves above everybody else, but we put all of us underneath the protective care of our Lord in heaven. We're better able to see how all of it fits together for us. When we are humble and contrite, we are privileged to live together in the body of Christ with one another. We are privileged to live as part of a community of faith that serves one another, that lifts each other up, that encourages one another, that stands in the presence of our loving God and experiences his presence and a little bit of the kingdom of heaven raining down upon us. When we aren't concerned about how we impress the world, we're able to see the world for what it truly is, as a world who needs Jesus just as much as we do. And we're able to share that love with others, not in judgment, but in love and in acknowledgement that all of us are poor in spirit. 164 years ago tomorrow, some folks who lived in this area decided to get together. They knew that they needed Jesus. They knew they needed Jesus so much that they traveled all the way into Rockford by whatever means necessary in order to worship. And they thought, you know, maybe we need to bring Jesus here to this place, to our neighborhood, so we can share with our neighbors who Jesus is. And so they got together and they formed Middle Creek Church. And Middle Creek Church has been bringing Jesus and the kingdom of heaven to this spot on earth for 164 years. May God allow us to continue in our poorness of spirit, to recognize what he is doing in our lives and to share that with the rest of the world for another 164 years and beyond. Amen and amen. Well, I thought we, as we respond to what God has to say to us that we would respond with that ancient creed, the Apostles' Creed. So let us recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
So we're going to learn a new hymn. I know how much you love learning new hymns. So just for that, we're going to sing this hymn most of the time during the next eight Sundays because it's the Beatitudes, and it'll help us to see how all the Beatitudes go together, although I found another version of the Beatitudes, so we might halfway through switch to that version. This is called Blessed Are They. If worse comes to worse, at least just sing the chorus with me, but we're going to sing it through quite a few times, so I think you'll get it. So I'm learning it too, and just as I kind of butchered the first him, I'm going to probably butcher this one. So just keep singing the words that are up there. I'll try and do at least the right notes. How's that sound? See, you almost know it by now, right? Right. So it is our custom here to acknowledge and recognize those folks who have been members of our congregation for 50 years or more. And so I'm going to ask my able-bodied assistant, Patrick, to help with handing out there on this side, Pat, on this side to help with the distribution of the certificates. And we're going to start with our 50-year folks and move on up. So we have as our first, first two people, Phyllis and Del Tedrick. 
50 years members. You can clap if you want. Loretta Friedland is a 50-year member. I'll give Pat time to get to all those folks. Julie and Gary Johnson have been members for 51 years. Over that away. Carol Bachman has been a member for 51 years, and Dave is here to receive hers. Linda Burkhardt has been a member for 53 years, as has Peggy Eichstadt, who is not here today. Bonnie Toomson has been a member for 54 years. as has Pat Stahl, 54 years. And Carol Erksleben is 54 years, and we'll save that for you, Gordy, if you would be willing to give that to your lovely wife. Dennis Herbert is 55 years. Double nickels here. Christine Baumgarten received hers uh, at the first service for 55 years as well. Garrett and Vivian Zoot have been members for 56 years. As has Wanda Reynolds, who is not here today. I think she's enjoying Blueberry Lake. Margaret Adams has been a member for 58 years. As has Jeanette Fay. Mike Friedland has been a member for 59 years. Mike's over there, Pat. Sorry, I'm moving fast. Sam Morrison has been a member for 61 years. And he wasn't able to make it today, but that's an awesome thing. And Dave Bachman has been a member for 61 years. Gordy Erksleben, who's up in the back here, has been a member for 61 years. We'll get that to you when, we, when you come down. Harriet Langley has been a member for 63 years. As has Sally Patrick. Doris Smith has been a member for 64 years. as has David Johnson, and Carolyn Johnson has been a member for 65 years. Now, at the 65-year mark, you get to speak, if you wish, about why you love Middle Creek. And so, Joanne Merrill, if you would like to be the first one, we are going to give you your recognition for 65 years. Patrick, I hope you brought that microphone. Make sure it's on. If you don't wish to speak, that's perfectly fine. Mildred, or excuse me, I missed one. Jerry Langley has been a member for 68 years. How could I forget you, Jerry? Would you be interested in speaking? Fifty-eight years, that's a long time. <laughs> um, Mill Creek's always been a special place. Uh, we moved down here from Duran and started going <coughs> here because that's where my mom's family went for many years. Um, went through the Sunday school years and got married here. Um, led the youth in the youth group and um, served as a trustee it's just been a special place for us and um, a bunch of great people and I thank you all 
Mildred Ridgeland has been a member for 69 years. I guess I always have something to say. <laughs> um, when I married Art, there was never even a conversation about where we'd go to church. It was just automatic. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been um, a joy to be a member for all these years. And probably one of the scariest situations was when um, Pastor Keith was here and he came to the house one day. I had just been elected an elder and he said, I'd like to have you be my clerk of session or the clerk of session and I didn't think I could do it but with God's help I did and with God's help, I've done so many things in my life, and I, I'm blessed, and I know that, and so is this church. Maury Patrick has been a member for 74 years, as has Margaret Jones for 74 years. That's okay. Jim Bridgeland has been a member for 76 years. <laughs> and finally, Joyce Morrison has been a member for 79 years. So we've already started having our God sightings with those folks, I'm going to ask you to also wander around for God sighting. Um, are there any others, any folks who have a God sighting that they would like to share? I shared this one with the first service. Um, I saw this on Facebook, but it touched me very much. There was a lady going through a drive-in, put in her order, but something told her to buy a cup of coffee for the man behind her. And she looked in the mirror, <coughs> looked like kind of a tough, grouchy old guy, but ordered him a cup of coffee. And then she pulled up to wait for her order, and he pulls up beside her with a cup of coffee, puts his window down and says, please put your window down. And she did, and he said, I have been having a very, very hard time my sister died, and I have been very, very angry with God. And I said, God, if you're really there, have that lady in that car ahead of me buy me coffee. And she did. And he was sitting there with tears in his eyes and said, thank you for listening to God and answering that. And it, it just touched me so. Sometimes God speaks to us, and we don't understand, but I hope we respond like this lady who had that mo movement, you know, buy him a cup of coffee and saved his life with it. Any other God sightings? I know there was one in the corner there. This is a God sighting that happened a couple weeks ago. Our own Joanne Hornicke went down to Illinois State and was one of the coaches for the Special Olympics from Byron. Um, 16 of the kids were recognized with first place and they were participated in swimming and track. And I think we just need to recognize Joanne for the hard work she did with these young people. Are there any other God sightings? Up at our cabin in Wisconsin, I was out in the paddle boat with each dog. Each has his own term, because I can't take two together. But anyway, coming back on shore, there was Tony sitting at the end of the pier, 
and these birds were dive bombing him. And it was like, whoa, what's going on there? And as I got out and sat down with him and looked up there, I thought, well, what is going on? There was a bird nest on one of the solar lights that we had put on the pier. The top had broken off, so there was just the cup. And I looked in there, and there were three beautiful little white with brown spot eggs. Oh. And the birds kind of left us alone because I guess we decided we were bigger than them or something. But anyway, the three baby birds that when we go back up, I want to see three babies in there. Any other God sightings? Our prayer covenant this week is with Barb Hazard and Dennis and Deb Herbert, and so we'll be praying that you get to see God in a special way this week. Our prayers want to be with Roger Buck and his family uh, on the passing of Adele Buck. I know this might be a surprise to some of you. She's a very private person and had asked not, not to have us, have us not share with others what was going on. Um, she had a very quick battle with cancer and um, and we know we have that comfort of knowing where she is that she is with her Lord in heaven and so we do want to offer our condolences and uh, prayers to Roger and his family on the death of Adele are there any other joys or concerns that anyone would like to share I have put on our concerns list a couple of people, and my son-in-law's mother is doing pretty good, home and doing fine after her bout with pneumonia. My friend that was in the hospital after getting E. coli and then pneumonia, I talked to her two days ago. She is still in Mercy Health. This is three weeks today, but she got very close to the end of life but is coming back and they hope by Monday to get her out of there and into a, a probably Van Mater for therapy and she had enough strength to talk this time the time before she could hardly do that so Barb Lyford is coming along and I am so thankful <laughs> any other joys and concerns then let's come to God in prayer Dear Lord, we thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you that you are our God and we can put our trust in you. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and for those receiving treatments and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with addiction and mental illness. We pray for caregivers. And Lord, we pray for those who mourn. We pray for the poor and the oppressed for those who find themselves living in a violent place. We pray for those who continue to deal with human-made and natural disasters. And we especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help us. Lord, we pray for our world's leaders. And we pray for the church we pray for the church around the world, and we pray for this church. We pray, Lord, that we continue to be a beacon on the hill, a light in the darkness, a place where people might find rest for their souls and encouragement for each new day. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
I know that Pat Stahl has an announcement and offering to give, and so we will allow her to make that announcement. Yes, and I have a thank you, because we had enough people in the last hour that we have our things put together to hand out for Vacation Bible Camp at the two parades, 4th of July in Winnebago and July 14th in Byron Fest. And um, what we need now is walkers and riders for on the parade wagon. So, and if somebody wants to help put things together, I have a truck volunteer <laughs> that will, is taken care of. And the wagon, um, Gene says we can use his, but we're hoping that we don't have to do hay in the middle of these two parades and put it together. If there's anyone else who has a wagon that can just sit after we put it together, that would be good. But uh, we will be riding in these two parades. And I have more information and sign-up sheets for walkers and riders on the board. Please know that the butterfly release starts at 10 and not 10.30 as it is in the bulletin. So it's 10 o'clock. Ah, 10 o'clock for the butterfly release. That's this coming Saturday, correct? And yes. you need helpers who are setting up by 8, those who signed up, or 8.30. There's one in the back there. This should have been earlier. I like for us to offer prayers to my son who is on the 25th of this month through the 5th of, the 5th of July. That sounds right, right? Okay. From the 25th through the 5th, he's going to be traveling to Korea. And I, that's just a scary place to me. I know it shouldn't be, but I'm scared and worried for him, and I want God to go with him. I did want to make an announcement. I forgot to make it at the beginning of the sermon. Uh, we want to give our thanks to some folks who are contributing during our um, series on the Beatitudes. Um, Loretta Friedland and Sue Goodvangen uh, made our blessed banner over here. It, it's lovely. And, uh, well, I know Sue did some and you, were, you helped. I don't know. Anyway, you put it up, I'm sure. So we want to end. The artwork on the front of the bulletins are, uh, for this entire series are going to be drawn by Shannon Schrader. And so if you happen to see her ever, um, please let her know. Um, she, she is taking the scriptures and interpreting them artistically pretty much on her own. And so, so it's, it's neat to see what comes out of her expression um, of these particular passages. Uh, we do want to remind you that for those who are visiting, please feel free also. We have Bibles in the back. These were originally given um, to the church. Uh, they are study Bibles and the Revised Standard Version. And uh, this is probably the last Sunday that we'll have them out. Then we'll try and figure out who to give the Bibles to. But anybody who wants to take any number of them, feel free. If I don't have any to give out, that's perfectly fine. You'll also find on the back table some wonderful mementos of our history that Phyllis Tedrick pulled together, and, uh, and so feel free to go and look at those uh, after worship. You'll also find all three sizes of the shoe that grows. This is our mission opportunity for the summer. Uh, these, are shoe, these are sandals that adjust about four sizes and um, for each of the different size groups. And we are going to be giving those shoes uh, to the, fo the folks in our sister parish in, um, in Kenya. And so the Sunday school class has contributed their money towards that. Vacation Bible Camp is contributing. And we are asking each member to think about contributing. You can write a check uh, to the church and then just put in the memo line a shoe that grows uh, for that. And we'll have more information about that as we move through the summer. The Thursday prior to Byron Fest uh, is always Gospel Fest. 
the assemblymen are going to be performing at Gospel Fest this year, so that ought to be a lot of fun. Uh, on the bulletin board is the sign-up sheet for anybody who wishes to contribute a pie or a cake for their uh, ice cream social that happens after the concert. And so please consider that. We will need to give the final count of pies and cakes to the um, coordinators of the Gospel Fest by July 5th. So think about it, pray about it, decide whether you're uh, able to contribute and put your name down on that. We do have, uh, we talked a little bit about advertising for Vacation Bible Camp. I want to encourage all of you, if you have children in your neighborhood, get a registration form for them and encourage them to come. We have the most awesome Vacation Bible School slash camp in the, in the region. And, uh, and so um, I would encourage you all to, in, to invite folks to come. Uh, it's for preschool through grade five. And uh, the kids love it so much that those who graduated from fifth grade asked if they might be able to come back somehow and, and work it because they love being here so much. So we would encourage all of you to participate in that. Uh, I know Betsy updated the, the Church World Service kits. And so please look and see what else is still needed. Uh, for the kids. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let's continue the mission of God through our presentation of tithes and offerings. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, all oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to I need thee every hour, teach me thy will, and thy rich promises in me fulfill. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. We lift our voices, we lift our hands. We are on our last song. If you wish to stand for the last song, you may, but you also may stay seated. We are one in the spirit. We are one.
And as is our custom, let's reach out to those around us as we give and receive the blessing. The grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. I have decided to follow.